Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we're unboxing a knife that I went from not knowing existed to owning over the course of a single day. I bought this off of Kevin aka Lefty EDC and I learned it existed in the morning by seeing his story where he wasn't even that, that he had the knife and he was showing it in his own story. He was just tagged in someone else's story and he reshared it. I then, over the course of that afternoon, learned that he in fact did own the knife and had already finished doing his review for it and was looking to sell it. And since I saw that it was sold out in the form that you can buy it normally, I went ahead and bought it off him. So that's the kind of craziness that happens in my life now. And to unbox it, I will use another knife that I recently picked off of him. This is the Civivi Altis. So where is a good spot to cut? Feels like right there. Okay, so this, ooh, that's a very slim box for a knife. Holy moly. And because he's Kevin, naturally, more stickers. Go check him out. Um, yeah, so this is an incredibly slim box. Uh, yeah, okay, so what we have here is the Picaroon Tools Mutineer. So Picaroon is a word that means like, um, scoundrel or something like that and it's a very piratey word and Picaroon tools is a guy in bulgaria i think that um just makes what he describes as like tools for the everyday pirate is a it's a lot of like bottle opener pry bar -y kind of keychain and just kind of like edc carry objects that are all very very nautical themed and so this is his first i think his first knife design i'm a Guessing that he is in fact in Bulgaria. So what does that say? Yada 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 yada. Cool. That is some sense of a warranty comment. You can check him out at Pickering Tools on Instagram and I guess on Facebook. And let's get to the actual knife because this is the thing that made me want to try it. The shape of this knife is just seemed like it'd be really pretty good. So this is a reasonably small knife OEM'd by Best Tech. And yeah. Look at that. So yeah, this is a, a three inch blade, I think, um, maybe just under 2.95, something like that. And it's pretty thin blade stock, 0.125. And it's just like a really kind of practical looking, you know, frame, titanium frame lock, like Warncliffe knife. I just, when I, the moment I saw, I love knives like this. I love Warncliffe's. I love practical cutter knives. I love the knives that have the blade below the handles that you can get your fingers, you know, you have room for your fingers underneath in order to be able to get down into surfaces. I love knives that give me a place to put my, my finger when I rest. This just seemed immediately like a very, I love minimal knives too. And this just seemed like a very me knife. And uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it is immediately living up to what I expected. Um, I joked with Kevin that this is a knife that looks kind of like a bird and that he got it probably as opposition research because of his own knife that he designed from Devo Knives that's a, a partnership with him and a friend of his, which um, I'm blanking on that guy's name, but he's a knife designer. Um, it it itself looks like a bird <laughs> and like kind of undeniably looks like a bird what you got here is like this kind of beak thing going on an eye and like a kind of a stern eyebrow and so i joked that he just loves knives that look like birds and the reality is um that's probably a little bit true because if to make a knife look like a bird it means that you've got a like a worn cliff with a place to put your finger and like i just said in my intro bit there that's a thing that I really like in the utility of a knife. And yeah, this feels absolutely fantastic in a pinch grip. I've got this rounded off bit right here that's nestling into the, nestling into the back of my palm. I'm resting my finger on this spot and get this nice kind of rounded off parts right here that make this nice and soft to put my finger on. And this just feels kind of great. How does this feel in other grips? Um, Okay, this is one of my complaints about knives that look like birds. So depending on where this falls and depending on how you typically hold a knife, nubs like this or differences in slope right here can be either perfect for you or kind of annoying. So if I cant this knife forward in my hand, lean that tip far down and put my thumb right back here, then I'm right below, I'm above that hump. And now my finger's on that jimping and this jimping is actually 
very effective jimping. It is shallow but crisp, and that means that I can press my thumb down onto it and it doesn't hurt, but it locks me in place. But if I pull this back further, you can see where my thumb is naturally landing now, kind of right above that. And what that means is that my thumb is now pressing on this little bump. And this is actually a orientation that I will often have. This is kind of in between. Like this is like kind of more of a pistol grip and this is more of a hammer grip. And I'm I'm less likely to have it in this position and on, on, on most knives, I'm less likely to have it here than I am right about here in the in-between. This is what I tend to do, but this is putting me right on that hump, like I said. And so to make it be comfortable, I have to tilt it all the way further down. This would be like a proper full hammer grip, but put my thumb up. And now finally I'm resting right in that spot. And that, that is where it feels amazing. This feels fantastic. This feels fantastic. And the in-between feels uncomfortable. Not, not, not badly uncomfortable, just kind of uncomfortable, but it is still kind of uncomfortable. And so it's worth mentioning. One thing I really like about this, um, this hole open here is that it, the orientation looks nice in both closed and open directions. So in this direction, this is kind of pointing straight down, not quite, but basically pointing down. And in this orientation, you can see that it's kind of um, flat on this direction. So it's kind of wedged. And so they did a pretty good job of making this not look weird in other either clothes. And sometimes you'll find uh, knives, if they have a hole, that the hole will be oriented in a way that looks like really good when the knife is open, but then looks like it's totally crooked when the knife is closed or vice versa. It'll look good when it's closed, but then look like a really strange crooked thing here. So they managed to make this look kind of reasonable in both directions. Another way you could put that is maybe that it, this weird shape makes it look odd in both directions, but I kind of like it. I do wonder what the point of this shape is. Like, what, is this like a reference to a piratey thing that I don't understand? Let's see here. This is like their classic pirate logo. Does that kind of look like a pirate hat maybe? No, I don't know what that is. But it does make me wonder if it's, I mean, if, if it is anything more than just aesthetic, I'm really bad at, yeah, I'm so bad at thumb opening um, knives with holes. And I don't know why, but I'm really bad at it. This one's not worse than others. This is actually pretty easy to do. I'm just bad at it as like a general rule. <laughs> Um, how does this work in this direction? Yeah, so this odd shape right here that you know theoretically doesn't need to be like this means that you can't shove your, your finger in very far. And so you can get enough in that you can get the nail and kind of do this style of flick where you're flicking with your nail pressing into, into the, the blade there. And what I really love is that this uh, chamfer right here um, this blade has also been stonewashed. So in addition to not being a 90 degree angle, the crisp edges on this chamfer itself have been rounded off to this is really, really smooth. And you can see as my hand moves off this, that it does not scratch me at all. Um, the other way you would do this is by pressing the meat of your finger in. And this is again, where this odd shape is a little bit impractical because Look, I can't get my finger up into this end bit. Normally you would be able to press into the groove and I'm instead having to press down here uh, kind of against this and kind of pinch into this like little spot. And it works absolutely fine. It's just a little bit less intuitive and feels like a little bit, a little bit weird, but it does seem to work really well. Um, so what else we got going on here? This blade itself, I said, is stonewashed, uh, and it is S35VN. So this was originally done as a pre-order, and the pre-order was available in either full titanium in S35VN or micarta in D2. And I think the, the micarta in D2, there's also a G10 in D2, but they had the natural micarta in D2, and it actually looked really, really good with the National Micarta. I kind of loved the way that looked, but I didn't want a D2 blade. I live in Pacific Northwest where it's always damp. And so I don't like tool steels that are, are not stainless. And so I didn't want that. But there is a new pre-order. Um, after I got this, like a couple of days later, they did a new pre-order for, because they, they released yet a, another knife. They um, released a small fixed blade. I think it's called, let me find that real quick. 
J- Jaktar? Yeah, it's called the Jaktar. Yeah, um, and that now they're offering the picker, sorry, the mutineer uh, in S35 with my card as an option as well. But while I think that looks fantastic, I really, really like the finish on his handles. So this is something that Best Tech tends to do where you get a stone wash over this um, kind of micro milling. And so let me see if I can show this. This is, yeah, do you see the kind of micro pinstriping there? That is, I believe, just a side effect of how they're doing this contour to begin with. Like, I don't think they're trying to do like micro milling in the traditional sense, but it looks really nice. And the stone wash over top of it just kind of gives you this hybrid texture feel where there's some amount of texture that is uniform and some amount of texture that's random. And yeah, that could sound jarring, but it actually just looks really nice in person. Um, yeah, the contouring and everything is really, really good. I I honestly really like Best Tech as an OEM. I think they do really good work. The the thing that people tend to kind of um, uh, give them grief about is light detents. But the reality is um, they kind of do a variety of detents. And I think the people that are getting light detents are just asking for light detents. Like I think Joseph Vero really likes light detents because... True, this is a, a frame lock, not a liner lock, and frame locks tend to be f- firmer detents to begin with, but this is actually like a really pretty solid detent. It's not overly heavy, it's not overly light. It's it's very sufficient for flicking it out. Uh, how do we get uh, into this lock bar? So we've got a little scallop on both sides, but you can see that this is still a pretty small space right here. And there is... I'm going to say no recession. Uh, it, it's possible, actually, that there is very slight recession, that this might stick out very slightly, but I can't tell if I'm just tilting the knife. I think it's probably no recession. And what that means is that for me, I've got medium glove size hands, and so I tend to have slightly smaller fingers than the average guy that's huge and has giant extra large size gloves or something like that. Um, So I don't have any problem getting my finger in here, but I do think that some people will. However, this scalloping on both sides, I think... I think you have enough traction here. And the stonewash finish means that this all just, yeah, I find this really easy to unlock. I do think some people will have difficulty getting their finger in there. Um, Kev, like I said, did a full review of this. He has bigger hands than me, so I wonder if he made any comment of that in his video. How is the action on this in terms of like a smoothness perspective? Yeah, that feels great. Yeah. I don't feel any grinding. I don't feel the detent. I don't feel the the bearing balls themselves. Feels really nice. How is it in terms of shaking clothes? Oh, that's very easy. Yeah, this is... This is one of those knives. This is actually the kind of of action that I really enjoy, where you know it will, it won't, you know, it won't swing home on your finger, but it's super duper duper easy to close. Another thing right off the bat that I'm noticing is the shape. I commented earlier that this elevating the handle up from the blade profile down here means that you get uh, access for your fingers. But the other thing it's doing is look at the space right here. This is what's going to fall to your nail. So if you do the thing where you make it fall to your nail, you're not in the path of the blade at all. It's it's this spot that's going to land on your finger. And that's even if you're coming in from the side, it's that's the spot. And so I love when I see that on a knife because I personally really hate when a knife falling down onto my thing uh, scratches up and nicks up my finger. My my thumb is nowhere near as kind of mutilated looking as Kevin's is, but I'm, you know, like anyone that fidgets with knives or just plays with knives on a regular basis, using them or otherwise, um, tends to get some amount of like nail wear. And so I love when you have a knife that falls to your nail in a way that doesn't make that a thing at all. But right in front of that, look at what's happening here. This is right off the bat, the most obviously wrong thing that they did. This is the plunge grind. So that's the grind that's taking it from the full thickness to the thinnest behind the edge. And this is right up to the end. Like there is, I think what you need to do if you're going to sh- to sharpen this knife is you just need to pretend. You, 
you just need to pretend that it's a spider co and just pretend that the plunge is something you're going to sharpen right up to and uh i i the, the difference between these two though is that the spider co is a complete drop off and what that means is that you can get your sharpening stone right up to that end you can see that they didn't that the blade edge curves right there and they stopped sharpening right before it but you can you got to be careful when you're over there because you don't want to hit the sharpen you don't want to hit the stone itself into these corners you don't want to chip your stone stones are very expensive but you can get up right to that and, re and make it so there's not really a smile you'll just basically have a wall jut down but on this this is a radius curve to be able to show it, you kind of have to hold it tilted forward. And so you can't quite get straight up to that. But yeah, you're going to basically be sharpening away from this edge. And so honestly, I think if this is a knife that you plan on sharpening on a regular basis, you just kind of have to accept that you're going to form a little nub right down here. This is S35VN, like I said. S35VN has really nice edge retention. It doesn't have magical edge retention. It doesn't have super steel edge retention either, um, but it has good edge retention. So I don't think you'd have to sharpen this all the time. The other thing is that you, um, you are going to use a knife like this primarily with the tip. And so this is the part that is going to get the most wear. And so if you do sharpen this knife, the part that's gonna be the dullest and gonna need the most kind of steel removal will be at the tip. But this is also the kind of knife that is a perfectly straight across blade. So if you do what I was just suggesting and kind of focus more on this section more and remove a little bit more steel from that side than this side, you're going to end up making this blade no longer perfectly straight. So I don't know. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, if you if you are going to sharpen this regularly, I think you just have to accept that there is going to be a little notch down here. Or alternatively, take a tool and grind in your own um, sharpening trail right here. It, it, if you know what you're doing, it could look fine. If you send it off to a professional like Knife Modders on Instagram, it could look fine. Um, if you leave it and sharpen up and just have a little point, it's going to look fine fine depending on what you consider fine um this feels like it gets really nice and thin behind the edge uh yeah honestly it does it has a pretty short uh sharpening bevel right there so i'm guessing it's not crazy high and uh, crazy low angle but it does feel like it gets thin behind the edge but not like not like absurdly thin. Let me rephrase. It, it feels like it gets pretty thin behind the edge, but it doesn't stay pretty thin for very long. And what's going on there is just that this is, uh, like I said, this is, um, I think 0.12 blade stock and, but this grind is only right there. So if this were me in an ideal world, I would bring this, this, this grind all the way up. And so like, Let's say you wanted to get this sent in for regrind for a regrind. What I would do is have someone regrind it all the way to the up to make it a full flat grind and to make that plunge just be straight down. That wouldn't be terribly hard for someone to do if they're careful and they're using a belt. And so that might honestly, if this was like, if I found that this was a knife that I really truly loved, um, I might send this to someone like the knife modders and ask them to regrind this up and and bring that in and maybe even add in a troil for me and then re re tumble it and re give it a, a stone wash this stone wash is actually really quite nice you can tell that there's like oils down here in terms of the coloration but the actual finish of the stone wash is good can i get that to focus yeah um i don't know i keep saying things like if i really if i end up really liking it i don't know this is one of those knives that is enough of a me knife that i might end up really liking this it's actually a really pretty practical knife. Uh, I don't know if it will stick around in part just because I do have a lot of knives kind of like this. It's enough of a me knife that I wanted to check it out immediately. You know, I haven't talked at all about this clip yet. How's this working? I love when clips do this at the back where they have, you know, a, a chamfer coming down that, that reduces that slope. But I do think that they could have brought that a little bit uh, down further. Like they could have brought this in to the point where it's flush because I don't really see a good reason to have that stick up if you're going to do a chamfer in like that. How's that feel in hand? I wasn't noticing it earlier. I barely notice that at all. Yeah, I barely feel that. And the big reason I barely feel that is specifically because they brought this down and there's nice little chamfers on the ends. And so this is actually kind of hiding right there in my palm. I don't 
it doesn't jab me at all. On this end, yeah, it doesn't really jab me. They've done it again, like a nice job of kind of chamfering around every single surface. Uh, this knife was, I th think, about 200 bucks, something like that. Um, I don't know what it is. If you get in a pre-order, maybe there's a, a discount. And so honestly, across the board, I think for 200 bucks, a full tie frame lock knife in S35, I think this is a pretty good value. I think that um, the construction feels really, really nice. And the the anytime that you're buying into a like a small uh, designer gets an OEM to make it kind of knife, part of what you're paying for is the construction and value. And part of what you're paying for is, I'm sorry, the construction and finishing. And part of what you're paying for is the design. And I do think that this is actually a really well put together design. Yeah, this, yeah, honestly, yeah, I'm really pretty happy with this. Uh, I didn't look yet at this nice spring retention. This is like good and springy. I think it's going to slide in a pocket well. Let me try. Yep, that that is a very, very functional clip. I don't think I have any complaints about this. Steel lock bar travel, over travel stop as well. Uh, let me show something shiny to show you the internal milling. Can I get that white reflected up in there? It's, it might be hard to tell that this is internally milled, but that's because it's, it's just one giant pocket. Well, there's actually a, a smaller one over here. But there is one giant pocket right here this entire way. I imagine that this is pretty lightweight. It feels lightweight. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I think I, I, my my final thoughts on this knife is that I love that this is not scraping my nail. I think my final thoughts on this knife is that this is actually incredibly impressive. And since this is his first knife design ever, um, I'm. I'm going to keep watching this guy. I'm, I'm not a, a pirate. I'm not, I'm not a quote unquote everyday pirate that needs pocket tools for everyday pirates. And so, um, I, I'm not someone that's going to be buying his other pirate themed pocket gadgets, but his knives are apparently very well done. <laughs> so, okay. That's, I think going to be my final thoughts. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a full review on this. Depends on how long I keep it. Depends on if I keep it. Uh, depends on a lot of different things. But yeah, gut reaction is this is actually pretty freaking awesome. Cool. Went from not knowing it existed to buying it, and I'm pretty happy about that. Okay. Thanks for Kevin. Uh, thanks to Kevin for letting me pick one of these up when they were completely sold out. And thank you all for watching this, and I'll catch you guys next time.